Welcome to the ICD-10 CM and PCS training website. Hello, my name is Pietro Ingrande, and I do business as Codemasters. I have put together a training program to help coders transition from ICD-9 to ICD-10 while teaching them the tools and skills that they will need to ensure a seamless transition come October 1st, 2013. AHIMA has recommended 50 hours of training, and this program does just that. Participants will learn the organizational structure and differences between ICD-9 and ICD-10 and practice coding with case examples. In addition, participants who complete the program will receive 50 CEUs stamped with AHIMA's seal of approval. This is an online program. It's designed from the comfort of your home or office. I have created two introductory videos. One will cover ICD-10-CM and the other ICD-10-PCS. Both run approximately 30 minutes in length. Please watch both and get some insight into some of the nuances of ICD-10-CM and PCS and what to expect with my online training program. Before we get started, let me say what an exciting time this is to be an HIM coding professional. Coding is a passion for me. I hope it is for you, too. I look at the transition from ICD-9 to ICD-10 as an opportunity. The change from ICD-9 to ICD-10 is a radical and fundamental change in our industry. For those of you who are new to the HIM field and coding, the changeover is going to level the playing field. Well, what does that mean, you may ask? Well, it's expected that many knowledgeable and skilled coding professionals are planning on retiring. That's going to create a huge gap in our industry as we lose a wealth of knowledge and experience. So where is the next generation of coding experts going to come from? You. That's right. You. As we transition to ICD-10, all coding professionals will be learning at the same time. There are few, if any, ICD-10 coding experts right now. Reason is, nobody is coding ICD-10. If you learn it, and learn it better than anyone else, it will be you who will become the next coding expert. And trust me when I say, your skills will be in very high demand. In the first few years of the changeover, hospitals will need extensive auditing and education to ensure compliance and proper code assignment. Opportunities will be many, and I expect salaries to go up as well. Like I said before, it's an exciting time to be an HIM professional. Why don't we go ahead and get started, and first let me acknowledge and thank my references. And as in, as in our industry when performing an educational piece, let me show you this disclaimer. And now let's get right into the meat of the program. What are the keys to success? Well, they're actually very simple. One, you have to have very careful planning. Two, you have to have very careful preparation. And three, the effort has to be there. A huge effort from all of us to ensure that when we train and plan and prepare, that we work very hard in learning ICD-10 and how to prepare for the transition come October 1st, 2013. It's going to take a huge effort on our part. We need to practice, folks. The changes are, are many. Uh, the fundamental change is huge. Uh, this is bigger than uh, the change from version 24 DRGs to uh, MS DRGs, much bigger. This is bigger than ICD-8 to ICD-9. I remember that one. So the effort has to be there, and I hope you will join me in that effort and, um, uh, and uh, perhaps even enter with this program. If you enter my course program, this is what you can expect. You can expect to learn about the history of ICD-10, organization and structure, new features, gems, alphabetical index and tabular list we will cover. We will look at the coding conventions, very important and the coding guidelines, very important as well. And most important, after covering the conventions and the guidelines and the structures and the new features, we will do a chapter-by-chapter -chapter review and actually practice coding. 
I uh, can't emphasize how important that is going to be for you to sit down and, and, and learn the different conventions and the chapter-specific guidelines so that you can code and learn and practice. Very huge feature of what we're going to offer. Uh, the tools that I'll be using, I'll be using the official coding rules and guidelines, the uh, coding index and the tabular list, and of course the AHIMA coder training manual and the AHIMA uh, coding training manual workbook. Uh, these tools are critical in, uh, in this program and uh, I'm sure you'll find them uh, very helpful and uh, why don't we take a quick look right now at one of those tools which is the ICD-10 official coding rules and guidelines. It should be up on your screen right now and as you look at it uh, you can see that uh, the format and structure is very similar to what we've been used to uh, with ICD-9. And uh, that's a good thing for us. It makes us a little bit easier to transition when the format and the structure is the same. Uh, why don't we take a look at uh, some guidelines right now? And one of my favorite ones that I like to look at is uh, uh, the coding of uh, sepsis. And uh, so why don't we do that? Why don't we do that and look at uh, coding of sepsis? And as you can see, guideline is structured very similar and the language is similar too uh, for a diagnosis of sepsis assign the appropriate uh, uh, code for the underlying systemic infection if the type or infection or cause of organism is not specified assign code A41.9 A41.9 this is an eye-opener for me at least it was when I saw it for the first time because we're so used to O38.9 and then a code from the R, from the uh, 995 category. All of a sudden we see codes A41.9 for sepsis and then subcategories R65. That's kind of an eye-opener and letting us know right away that this game has changed. And so if, if, you, if you've seen this for the first time, um, it's, it's probably a good indicator for you to see that, yes, this game has changed. And uh, we're going to have to get used to those changes and prepare accordingly. Uh, why don't we take a look at uh, the alphabetical index, and uh, it should be up there on your screen right now. And this is an electronic version, and uh, let me also say that uh, if you go to the CMS website, um, uh, you can uh, and click on uh, ICD-10, you'll find a wealth of tools that are available for you for free. Uh, you'll find the official coding rules and guidelines, and this index and tabular list that I'll show you later on are also available. Uh, of course, in my program, we will use the actual workbooks. I'm an old school type guy, and I believe that you learn how to code by using the books, and, uh, uh, and I will do just that. I don't want people to become encoder dependent, especially with the changeover that we're going to experience right now. You need to know how to uh, learn this with your book, and that'll help make you a better coder. Here's an electronic version of the uh, alphabetical index. Uh, it looks uh, similar to what you're used to right now. Why don't we go here to the P's and uh, see if we can find pneumonia. And I'm going to scroll down and, and see if we can do just that. And uh, that's a good indicator of something that you're used to. And bear with me as I do that. It's, Sometimes these things are a little bit of a challenge, especially when you are doing this online. As you can see, as I'm scrolling through here, I'm in the pneumonia category, and you can see some of the different uh, types of organisms with pneumonia. And you're probably seeing the codes that are involved. Here's your pneumococcal pneumonia and pseudomonas. And we're going to scroll up, and here we go. Yes, pneumonia. This is pneumonia unspecified. And uh, right next to it in parentheses are what we call non-essential modifiers. That uh, feature is, is also available in ICD-9, and those of you who have been coding for a while know that uh, uh, these uh, conditions that are listed in parentheses are non-essential modifiers. They can or they don't have to be in the statement, uh, diagnostic statement that you are coding. 
Uh, this is uh, pneumonia, pneumonia unspecified, and the code is J18.9. And again, that's a, um, a, a good uh, uh, indicator that um, um, uh, the ball game has changed. And, uh, and that we're going to have to really learn um, how to um, how to get used to uh, the new codes. Uh, I've got on your screen right now the tabular list. And uh, one thing that you can see right away that's different with uh, ICD-9 is that there's 21 chapters as opposed to 17 with ICD-9. Take a look at the structure of uh, the chapters and you'll see right away that every code with ICD-10 starts with a letter. And A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way down to Z. Uh, the only letter of the alphabet that is not used is the letter U. So um, um, that's set aside for future expansion. Uh, but you can see right away that uh, the uh, uh, diseases are formatted very similar as they were with uh, ICD-9, infectious diseases, uh, neoplasms, blood-forming organs, metabolic, mental behavior, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, they're formatted very similar, but uh, of course they now have new categories uh, and letters and numbers uh, associated with those categories. If you look at uh, the OB section, pregnancy, notice that it starts with the letter O, so that makes that kind of easy. And uh, conditions in the perinatal period, P. So um, there is some, some structure. Why don't we take a look at some of these uh, uh, codes right here. And uh, 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 here we have uh, bacterial diseases. And if we scroll down, we should be able to find code for bacterial infections, staph, and other types of conditions. So there's some examples of how we use the alphabetical index. One of the other tools that I will be using that is very um, critical to the program is the um, AHIMA workbook. And um, here's an example of it right here. And this workbook is used uh, in the Train the Trainer programs that AHIMA is uh, putting on. Uh, that program has a cost of over $3,000. Um, so you could go there and get this uh, book. Um, and uh, practice doing this program, uh, uh, or you can save a heck of a lot of money and go to my program uh, where we use the same book and uh, have uh, similar type uh, training. I say similar because there are a lot of differences. One, I think my program is better, a lot better. And the um, uh, reason for that is the uh, passion that I put forth in teaching the program and uh, the style that I use to teach. I think, co uh, I think coding should be fun. And entertaining, and we're going to, uh, as well as educational, we're going to do all of those things. Here's an example of uh, what you will see and experience. Uh, this is part of a chapter by chapter review, and here we would be looking at diabetes. And as you can see, there is a good explanation of, uh, of diabetes. And uh, uh, right here, you can see where a coding guideline is being covered. Diabetes codes are now combination codes that include the type and the body system that's affected. And as we scroll down, you'll see some exercises that you would code. These answers won't be here for you. They're in a different part of the workbook. Uh, this is just for uh, illustration only. Uh, but as you can see, uh, here's a case example that you would be coding, uh, non-proliferative diabetic uh, retinopathy with macular edema. And uh, you would code this with uh, using your code books, and then we would go over the answers. And then not only go over the answers, but we would discuss and um, go over the rationale on why we'd we use uh, the, these particular answers for our exercises. And in this way, you would get a, a very good and thorough uh, experience with actually coding and understanding what you're doing. Uh, it's not just saying, okay, here's the answer, that's it. 
know, we'll go over it. We'll talk about it. We'll exchange. You'll be able to ask questions in my course. This is an actual classroom type uh, setting. Uh, we'll be using uh, Go to Training, which is very similar to Go to Meeting, uh, except uh, you'll be able to raise your hand, ask questions, talk to me directly. We'll have a very intimate setting, about 25 people. So there'll be plenty of uh, opportunities to experience the classroom setting uh, in my program. And uh, by doing so, uh, you'll be able to uh, um, uh, get a very good educational uh, piece. So what are the advantages of uh, going to ICD-10? Well, ICD-10 codes provide um, uh, titles and language that complement accepted clinical practice. Uh, the codes have the potential to uh, reveal more about the quality of care, and uh, the, the data, of course, will be much better. It will be more meaningful and will be used uh, by a wealth of people in the healthcare industry uh, to understand and better design uh, algorithms to track outcomes. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to uh, be a part of, uh, of uh, the ever-changing healthcare uh, uh, system. Uh, you know, we are data collectors, and people use our data. They're used for hospital report cards. They're used internally uh, for performance improvement activities, for core measures. Uh, by, by collecting them and collecting them uh, accurately and appropriately, we make a difference. And uh, uh, the new codes will provide that greater specificity and detail uh, so that better decisions can be made. ICD-10 continues to have the same structure as uh, ICD-9. Uh, in that the first three characters of a category um, are the same and have similar traits. Uh, why don't we take a, an example of uh, uh, the 250 category for diabetes, 250. And we know that that's the uh, uh, hierarchical structure for all the codes that follow uh, to be related to diabetes. Well, ICD-10 is structured the same way with uh, the first three digits of different categories. Of course, they're different uh, numbers and letters, but the structure is still the same. And although the structure is uh, similar, there are differences, and we'll go over some of those differences right now. Um, as you, as our, we already showed you with uh, the, uh, the tabular list, there's now 21 chapters as opposed to 17 in ICD-9. All the letters of the alphabet will be used, except the letter U. That's going to be reserved for future expansion. In ICD-9, there are V and E codes, and these are supplemental classifications. They're now going to be incorporated into the main classification of ICD-10. Um, ICD-9, uh, uh, um, um, which classifies injuries in every type, will, um, will uh, be um, uh, now classified in ICD-10 by the specific site and the type of injury, a fracture, open wound, etc. Post-operative complications are now more procedure specific and body specific, and we'll see some examples in just a little bit. Um, ICD-10 codes are alphanumeric and up to seven characters. They don't have to be seven characters. Uh, just like uh, ICD-9 where it can be up to five characters, you can't have three digit codes, um, uh, that you, but you don't have to have five characters. Same thing with ICD-10. It can be up to seven. In fact, there's a couple of the examples that we did look at uh, the code for pneumonia, J189, uh, was only uh, four digits. So here's a little screen that can show you some of the differences, three to five characters in nine, three to seven in the ICD-10. First digit is numeric in nine, first character is alpha in 10. And uh, here you can read for yourself some of these uh, uh, changes that you can see. Well, here's a, a really, I like uh, this slide. This is a real good one that gives you an idea of the coding, the seven characters, and what the meaning is. It can be three to seven characters, as we talked about. Um, the first three characters will be the category. First category, The first character will always be an alpha code. Um, the two to seven characters can be either numeric or alpha. And the characters four through six uh, deal with the etiology, the anatomic uh, site, or the severity of the uh, condition. And the seventh character is an extension uh, code uh, that is used for uh, OB injuries and external causes of injuries. Some of the new features that you'll see in ICD-10 
uh, combination codes uh, for conditions and symptoms or manifestations. Um, and here's some examples. Di type 1 diabetes with nephropathy. Uh, as you can see real quick, uh, this used to be two codes with ICD-9. Now it's just one code instead of the 25040 and the 585 uh, code uh, with the appropriate fourth digit category. It's now one code. Here's a real good example of atherosclerotic heart disease of the native coronary artery with unstable angina. What I like about this is that it's a lot of detail, native coronary artery with unstable angina. Right now we code these as two separate codes, 414.01 and 411.1. This is now a combination code with ICD-10. And if you're wondering, those of you that are heavy into MSDRGs, well, how is that going to affect MSDRGs? when you have a secondary code that is now combined and that secondary code used to be either a CC or an MCC, well CMS is aware of that and what they have done is that if you have a combination code and the secondary code is a CC or, or, or an MCC, uh, it will be uh, counted as part of the MSDRG assignment. So you won't lose anything. It'll pretend like it's two codes for MSDRG assignment, but it will just be one code for capture. Uh, here's some examples of some combination codes for poisonings and external causes. Uh, here you see a, a T36.0X, this is a placeholder, and we'll talk about that in my class, 1D. Poisoning by penicillins, it's an accidental uh, um, and unintentional, and it is the subsequent encounter. This D uh, is, a, is a placeholder that indicates uh, whether it's an initial or a secondary uh, uh, encounter. Um, here's another example, adverse effect of benzodiazepines, initial encounter. And we will now see with our codes in ICD-10 added laterality. And here's some examples of those, swimmer's ear, left ear, uh, chondromalacia, right shoulder. Left and right now have meaning in ICD-10. And in the event that your provider does not uh, document uh, properly, uh, there is a code for unspecified uh, laterality. There is a seventh character now being used for uh, extensions for episode of care. We've seen a few examples, and here's another one. And I like this example here, too, because look at the detail that you see, age-related osteoporosis with a current pathological fracture the right femur, initial encounter, wonderful information, concussion with loss of consciousness, 30 minutes or less, the initial encounter, displaced fracture of the neck of the left radius, initial encounter for an open fracture, type 1 or 2, initial encounter, great stuff, great stuff. Uh, I'm really excited about these new changes. Uh, there's also expanded codes for injuries and diabetes and other conditions, and here are some examples here, and again, just look at the detail that you see. It's, it's uh, really exciting. This is a good example of a, uh, of a, a complication, post-operative complication, where you see that um, uh, this code here, accidental puncture and laceration in ICD-9, that's a 998.2 that we're used to. Well, now these are specific to the uh, b uh, body system and or organ and the type of procedure. Look at this. This is a digestive system organ during a digestive system procedure. And you'll see a lot of that detail for these post-operative complications. Um, inclusions of trimesters, you'll see now in obstetrical cases, uh, the elimination of the fifth digit for episode of care. In ICD-9, as you are aware, the fifth digit indicates whether it was delivered or antepartum or postpartum. That's going to disappear with ICD-10. And what you're going to see extend are trimesters uh, being the main focus of the uh, codes. Here is the O for OB and a code for pre-existing hypertension, essential, complicating pregnancy in the second trimester, and anemia complicating pregnancy in the third trimester. So it's now all about trimesters and the outcome of delivery is not really an issue anymore. There are going to be changes in the time frames that uh, uh, we're used to for some uh, specified codes. For example, an acute MI uh, when you're coding it now, it's it's up to eight weeks or less. Well, now it's going to be four weeks or less. And abortion versus a fetal death changed from 22 weeks to 20 weeks. 
So there are a lot of uh, uh, changes that you do have to know about, and the only way to know about it is to have special specialized training to learn how to uh, 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 how to code with ICD-10. You can't learn this in an eight-hour seminar. You really can't. You really do need that 50-hour specialized training. Here's an example of a coding guideline. Uh, this is what it is in ICD-9, anemia associated with a malignancy. And when the admission encounters management of an anemia associated with malignancy, and the treatment is only for anemia, the 28522 would be appropriate, followed by the malignancy. Now let's take a look at ICD-10. Anemia associated with the malignancy. As you can see, the language is very similar. Very similar indeed. But when the admission encounters for management of an anemia associated with malignancy and the treatment is only for anemia, look what just happened. The appropriate code for the malignancy is sequenced first as the principal diagnosis, followed by the anemia. That's a fundamental change for what we're doing. So how do you learn about these things? Well, you learn about them in class by actually sitting down and coding and practicing. And that's what you'll do in my program. And uh, I hope that uh, uh, you will uh, join me in uh, learning ICD-10 and uh, getting ready for the change, fundamental change and um, be able to meet that challenge that's ahead of us. That will conclude my program for ICD-10. Please go to my website at uh, primacodemasters.net and uh, take a look at my PCS program. And I hope that you'll uh, uh, join me in these classes and learn ICD-10 together. Thank you so much for your time.